Okay, so without further ado, um, I present Laura Bird from Australia. <laughs> what, a, what a beautiful welcome. Like, I feel like I've already met everybody in Canada. <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate you all coming. I appreciate that you're interested in the same crazy stuff that I'm interested in. Um, and because I work with animals, I haven't really prepared anything, okay? When you work with animals, you learn to go with the flow. So Alexa's gonna kind of like wave at me wildly when I go over time, which I'm bound to do because once I start talking about this stuff, I just get off on tangents. If I see your hands shoot up throughout the talk, please jump in with questions. I mean, I'll, I'll try and leave time at the end um, because I would love to, you know, those of you I haven't met yet, I'd love to meet you. I'd love to answer your questions, especially if you've got something in particular going on with your animals and you want to catch up before the end of the night, I would love that. And um, yeah, I want to really share something valuable with you today about what I've learned through the work I've done with animals. So like 15 years ago, I uh, was working in a job that I hated and I was um, selling artwork. I'd sold everything from like furniture to carpet. Artwork was actually quite fun, right? But it wasn't a job I particularly liked and something kind of weird happened with me where I, I got unwell and because of that I needed to really change everything I was doing and the horses were a big part of that for me. They were a big part of my journey to starting animal therapy. So my horses always loved natural therapies and really didn't like it. The veterinary care. Like, Into natural therapies, not the veterinary care so much. And no, no, nothing against the veterinary care, it was great and it's necessary sometimes, but it was like I had this particular horse that really came into my life as a messenger to get me on the kooky path that I am now on. <laughs> uh, and she did everything possible to do that. So, so when I became sick, um, I started to explore natural therapies and the first thing I got qualified in was was Bowen therapy which I don't know if you guys here in Canada know much about Bowen therapy but it's actually it's an Australian modality that works on the fascia of the body so um, I began to do my case studies and get my hands on all these horses all these horses that weren't my own horses and the weirdest thing happened it was like when I put my hands on them, I was hovering over a, um, a computer file that, you know, just looks like a generic computer file, but then when you, like, put the mouse over it, all of a sudden you get information, you get data about what's going on in that file. And at that time, I went, ah, oh, I remember, I used to do this when I was little. I used to do this before I unlearned how to do this. I used to do this before I got in trouble in school for letting the mice, the class mice, out of the cage. And then when the teacher asked me, why did you do that? I was like, well, they asked me to. <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that got me my first detention. <laughs> um, and so the, the journey went on from there. I began to work with lots of people, lots of people's animals that I didn't know. And, um, and I started to receive lots of information and I started to work with horses, dogs, cats, and then eventually humans, it always comes back to humans. Animals have this amazing way of bringing us back to humans. And the cool thing that happened for me personally with that was that that journey healed the condition that brought me to the work to begin with. So I became very ill, I was only young, I was in my very early 20s. And, um, and all of a sudden, through doing this work, coming back to humans, I became well myself. So I was really aware that animals had come into my life as messengers. But it wasn't until I started working with so many different species in the home, in different people's homes, that I started to notice some big themes that were on. Who here's got cats? <laughs> Who here's like not a cat? Oh, awesome. <laughs> that, 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 of course. <laughs> of course, you can have a long group. <laughs> but you, you get that, right? Like sometimes you get people that are not cat people, yeah. they don't like cats. And, um, and sometimes you get people that have 
conflicts with a particular species. So I would go to um, I would go to somebody's home, and everything was fine with the dogs, but everything was chaos with the horses. And and I began to notice that there were certain themes that were going on with different animals. And who thinks it's just a cra who sometimes just steps back sometimes? I'm assuming you guys have all got animals or had animals and you have these crazy moments when you're in your lounge room and the dogs are asleep and the cat's there and you go, this is bizarre. These species, these different species live with us yeah. and they choose to share their lives with us. Does that freak you? That freaks me out sometimes. I have these like, moments where it just blows my brain that that would even happen, you know? Um, especially with the, you know, how incompetent we all are at uh, understanding what's going on with them. And yet they really love us and they choose to be with us. And so, so it's amazing, isn't it? It really is. And then you go, and then you go to horses and like, really, there is no way, force for force, that you're going to make a horse do anything. And I show jump my horses over like, you know, I'll, like, and they go over that for me. It's it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. So I, I really became aware that not only were these animals willingly in pact and partnership with us, um, that they'd made contracts with us, that they were here to teach us things, and they were here to help us grow. But but also that the different species had different roles. So that's what I want to share a little bit about today, okay? Because I believe that at the moment we as a, as a, as a species, as a, as a culture as well in the Western world, we seem to have big contracts with dogs, cats and horses. And those contracts are all very different. And I'm sure that each of you here has had a contract with a dog, a cat or a horse or maybe all three. Yeah? And so I want to spend a little bit of time going into what are the fundamental differences because animals across the board are messengers from, you know, like whatever we have unique and individual relationships with our animals, just like all of us here could have a unique and individual relationship. Like I met somebody today and we, I knew her by another name. Who knows where from, but... Um, but also, these animal species have different frequencies and do different things on the planet and for specifically for us as humanity. So I want to start with dogs. Because dogs, um, my experience of dogs is that they, um, so I'm going to talk about these different frequencies, right? I'm kind of like developing some of my own ideas about this. I'm going to use my own lingo about this, and if you've got questions, just stick your hand up, okay? But I want to relate dogs to this, what I call the second frequency, which also happens to vibrate with the sacral chakra in our bodies. It vibrates with um, the organs of the sacral chakra, and I believe that dogs in a lot of ways are matrix holders for the sacral chakra on the planet. So what does that mean? Like, what does that look like? So we're, we're talking about what do they represent? And first and foremost, dogs represent family, pack, tribe, loyalty, and a bond that is just unbreakable. Will a dog still be loyal even if you kick it? Yep. They sure will. A cat will move up the road. <laughs> <laughs> cat will just find somewhere else. Probably actually already has somewhere else lined up. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a cat has, I have a cat, he, he, he visits regularly but I know he has somewhere else. Yeah. He's cheating. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. He, he's not really cheating. <laughs> they have an arrangement. Absolutely. Yeah. They have he's giving all his needs. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So dogs don't. Dogs don't do that. Dogs are very loyal, and and because of that, dogs often come into our life to help us heal issues that relate to our tribe, to our family of origin. So so they work. They do a lot of work with children. They're very protective of, of children and, um, and they do a lot of work also for us, for our inner child, where we are at that age where
where the things that we believe about the world are as follows. My family is just how it is. There is no other way. What my parents say is, is truth. I don't know who I am yet, I'm just part of this, whatever this is, the tribe. My, what I want doesn't matter yet, just belonging to this tribe or this pack, that's important. So dogs will come with all of that energy and, and their mindset is very much focused on others, of giving, of being of service. So, you know, if, if you've done any work with dogs, one of the really common things like Alexa and I see, and, and I know we've got a vet here, we may have more than one vet here, um, you see dogs really give of themselves to a family to their own detriment at times. And, you know, Alexa and I see that and we see people ask the question, can you just tell the dog to stop doing that? Like, it doesn't need to do that anymore. Like, it's okay. That is what the dog is here to do. Dogs need a job and their job is to serve and it is to serve the family unit. The importance of self doesn't matter as much as the importance of the tribe, of the pack. So, so they are quite amazing like that. And if we then look at the organs that are in that part of the body as well, so the kind of you know, do we all know somebody that's got, or, or maybe I'm going to own up to this as well, right? Whose dog is their baby? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to own up to it because my dog is also my mother, my sister, my, sister, my teacher. Um, but she, yes, she is also my baby. And I don't have human babies, I don't really have any desire, but my dogs are my babies. So, you know, when we look at the organs in this, in this area, we look at the reproductive organs, we look at that, like, creative force, and we look at the kind of bond that mother to child has, that's a really great way of understanding why dogs are in our life. So, um, those kinds of issues, perhaps in all of us that we have, whether it's from, whether it's something that's happening in our life now, or something from our past, that developmental period, and I'm probably going to say like maybe the ages of three through to 12 is going to be your period where dogs will, um, they'll be working with you on the things you learnt at that time, and whether those things now serve you or do not serve you anymore. So, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see there's already a few little mm. um, and, and I want to give you some examples to colour this as well um, as we go along. But I'm going, to, I'm going to move on to cats if I can, because cats is kind of like the next, the next level. And there is no level, one level that is better than the other. If, um, if you guys know anything about like the chakra system and the way things, things work as a whole. We are no, our, my body is no good if it's just a leg or a brain or just a heart, it's got to have all the parts. I've got to be whole and all of those things need to be working together. 